Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host out on the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good. It's summer. We're mid-June, Brian. What do you want to do for the show today? One of my favorite shows of the year, Matt. You know, most places, most uh, thoroughbred horse racing places, they'll give you the champions at the end of the year. But we do it two times a year, Matt. We're twice as good. We're going to do it two times a year. We're going to do our mid-season award show. The best of the best from the first half of 2021, folks. Tune in. In fact, why don't you subscribe now? Hit the subscribe button. Turn on your notifications so you won't miss another edition of Horse Center. Matt, are you ready for the award show, sir? I'm ready, Brian. Best of the best. The best of the best. We'll start with the three-year-old males, Matt. And I think there was some question who was the best three-year-old male going into the Belmont. Maybe there shouldn't have been. He was the favorite for the Belmont. But essential quality kind of put those uh, questions to bed, at least for now. He's our three-year-old male champion midseason. Absolutely, Brian. Four wins this, sorry, four starts this year, three wins. Only non-win was that fourth place, one length uh, defeat in the Kentucky Derby. But as you said, uh, uh, he answered the questions. And at this point um, is definitely the best three-year-old male. I think he's going to have to do more though to win the award. Yeah, most of these awards at the end of the season, they're not sewn up, of course. Uh, there, there might be one or two where it looks really good right now, and essential quality probably fits into that boat. But yeah, things could certainly change throughout the year. But essential quality, hey, six of seven, we're going to talk about a bunch of horses with really good lifetime records, and we're starting with essential quality. The son of top and trained by Brad Cox, two-year-old champion. He was three for three last year, Matt, so he's six for seven. He's won three graded stakes already this year. The Southwest, the Bluegrass, he looked good doing it. Looked good in the Belmont. Kentucky Derby wasn't his best. Essential quality is the three-year-old. They're all going to have to come to get, just like last year as a two-year-old. Yeah, that's for sure. And I think at this point, Brad Cox is pointing to one of the big prestige races. He's pointing to the Travers. And, hey, frankly, a win in that race is going to make him really tough. Yeah, there's some uh, lightly raced horses. Maybe life is good. It comes back to make some uh, noise, but essential quality is our midseason three-year-old champion. Three-year-old Philly champion, Matt, I don't think there's too much of a question. Although Malathot, the production of, the wonderful production of Curlin and Dreaming of Julia, Matt, she's only had two races this year, but still, the way she's done those two races, you got to give her the midseason championship. Absolutely. We got a lot of horses on this list, I think, Brian, that have that two for two record this year at this point, which I hope uh, points to the fact that they're going to have more than two races going on the rest of the year. Maybe they'll have, let's go crazy, maybe they'll have three races or even four races to finish out the season. But yes, Malathot, I think, uh, is a very clear leader in the three-year-old Philly division with two grade one wins already, the Ashland uh, in Kentucky, followed by the Oaks at Churchill Downs, both uh, impressive victories. Everybody else has kind of dropped along the wayside uh, except for search results. Matt, don't get me started a number of starts here. Malathod only had two starts this year and already she's resting. So uh, please don't get me started. But the, Mal but the Philly Malathod, the daughter of Curlin, has just been wonderful in five career starts. Of course, she was undefeated in three starts, including a couple stakes wins at Aqueduct last year. Listen, she's a beautifully well-bred filly. She's a beautiful filly. She closes her races with strength and power, and those two grade one wins have her as the midseason champion. But on the other hand, Matt, yeah, search results. I'm glad you mentioned her because search results has already run five times this year. There's something to be said for that volume, and search results, of course, only loss was by a neck to Malathot. So if she can turn the tables on Malathot in the big race, maybe at Saratoga, this division uh, could change. But for now, it's the undefeated Malathot, three-year-old Philly, mid-season champion. Older dirt male, Matt, there's some uh, contention here. And I think there'll be contention probably all the way through the Breeders' Cup Classic in this division, Matt. Right now, we had to uh, go to our tiebreaker, Tony Bada Bing, and come up with Silver State, who was my choice 
as the older dirt male mid-season champion. Yeah, Silver State uh, trainer Steve Asmussen has, uh, you know, this kind of horse has become his specialty. Horses that get better as they get older. Horses that get better the more that they race. Uh, both things that you and I like to talk about on Horse Center and, and Silver State uh, has done just that with a bunch of victories at Oaklawn Park and then followed by his big signature uh, victory uh, uh, last weekend in New York in the Met Mile, uh, 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 one of the uh, 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 high profile status victories that an older male horse can grab, Silver State uh, did it in the Met Mile. Yeah, with all due respect to the Pegasus, which is run in January at Gulfstream Park, I think the Met Mile is the biggest race the first half of the year uh, for older horses and Silver State won it, Matt. Hey, he's just on a hard spawn and he's starting to do things a little bit like hard spawn. Hard spawn, of course, was a very, very fine horse uh, from the uh, uh, Fox Hill uh, operation. And uh, this horse has won six in a row, Matt. He did it sprinting when he returned to Keeneland lightly raced uh, uh, as a three-year-old, but he came back with two nice wins in Kentucky, big win at seven furlongs. And now this year, four for four, all stakes, a mile through nine furlongs. He can go uh, at least nine furlongs as we saw in that Oakland handicap win. And then of course he comes to Belmont and he proves best in the one mile met mile. And that was a big win. And that's enough for me to say he is the best older dirt male for the first half of the season. Now you, on the other hand, had Mystic Guide on top of your list. I lean to Mystic Guide a little bit, um, basically because uh, I was looking ahead towards the end of the year, and, and my feeling is that Mystic Guide is more likely to win this championship as the year goes on than Silver State. But hey, like I said, uh, um, Asmussen can can get these horses good, these older horses, and keep them going. Um, if he can do that with Silver State, he's going to need some more grade ones. He's going to need to do them going that, you know, mile and an eighth distance that you mentioned. Yeah, maybe in a race like the Whitney. Uh, Silver State, four for four, six in a row. He's our mid-season older dirt male. The older dirt female, Matt, I think there was far less a question. You have horses like Monomoy Girl, uh, a Swiss skydiver who I love. She dares the devil, but First half of the year, you have to give it to Lachuska. The five-year-old daughter of Super Saver, Matt, has been terrific for the first half of the year. Yep, four starts, three wins, one third. Had that big win uh, in the Apple Blossom at Oaklawn Park over the other two horses that you mentioned, over Monomoy Girl, over Swiss Skydiver, um, and then into the FIPS uh, on Belmont Stakes Day in New York. The field didn't turn out to be as strong as we wanted. We were looking for Swiss Skydiver to come back, and, and, and that, didn't, that didn't work out. But still, you can't take anything away from Latruska and the victories, especially the one in the Apple Blossom over the other two contenders in the older female division. Right. And, and honestly, Matt, if you're going with Mystic Guide as your older dirt male because of what might happen the second half of the year, I would lean towards Swiss Skydiver personally. But hey, there's a ton uh, to prove still in, in all these divisions. But the midseason award has to go to Latruska, just like Silver State. She's done it from the beginning of the year. She won the Houston Ladies Classic, a graded stake down there at Sam Houston early this year. She just missed in her only loss. That was the She Dares the Devil. And then two grade one wins, beating the big girls in the Apple Blossom, an impressive win in the Phipps. She is the mid-season older dirt female champion. How about turf male, Matt? We're moving right along. And for turf male, uh, you know, he's only run two races, but I just don't see anyone taking this award way, uh, away from domestic spending, whether we're talking mid-season or whether we're talking what's going to happen the rest of the year. Yeah, he's looking like one of those Chad Brown horses uh, in, the, in the male turf division that's going to be very hard to beat, kind of like uh, bricks and mortar uh, from the past. You know, I would go even as far to think that at this point, uh, domestic spending has to be uh, a possibility for horse of the year if things don't work out. 
for uh, the uh, for the older male dirt horses as the year goes along. But you know, yes, uh, uh, domestic spending, two big wins, two Grade One wins, one of them in that dead heat. Uh, Colonel Liam, Colonel Liam did the heavy lifting in uh, you know in the first four five months of the year, um, and domestic spending seems to be picking up from there. Yeah, Colonel Liam got some things done early in the year, but uh, that uh, Manhattan where Colonel Liam was nowhere, I don't know if that bodes well for him going forward, at least in the next few months. Domestic spending, on the other hand, you know, like it or not, Chad Brown doesn't race these uh, superstars a ton during the year, so domestic spending's only had two starts. Hopefully we get five, out of, five or six out of them uh, but uh, it, you mentioned bricks and mortar. I'm going to mention Flintshire because Flintshire had a uh, kind of a feeling of inevitability when he uh, started rolling down the stretch. And that's kind of the same way I feel about domestic spending. I thought he was best when he dead heated for the win in the grade one old Forester turf classic on Derby Day. And then, of course, the Manhattan was just a tour de force where he beat the best turf field of the year for my money with uh, just awesome ease of so domestic spending two for two he is our turf male mid-season champion how about turf female matt i think we're gonna have to go with another horse our third horse already who's only had two starts but mean mary showed a lot last year she's certainly on the right track this year for trainer graham motion yeah she's got a great career record for Ian uh on the turf i think she's won something like seven out of ten starts something like that in her career but, you know, for these awards we're talking about this year and uh, Mean Mary is certainly one of the award winners, mid-season award winners that has a tenuous hold uh, uh, on, uh, on the award at this time. Because we're talking about a horse that has done really well, but there isn't a grade one victory uh, in those two. It's the grade three Gallaret uh, that happened at Pimlico and then uh, on Belmont Stakes uh, weekend, the grade two New York. So... There's a long way to go. There's a lot of grade one uh, turf races left in the year, especially up at Saratoga. So we'll see what happens in this division. I do agree with you, Matt. I, I agree that there just hasn't been a ton going on in this division yet. And it's a matter of who has looked the best or done the most so far. And that's me and Mary in our estimation. But knowing how good she was becoming as a four-year-old, we can easily see her keep the train moving towards a championship at the end of the year. But for right now, I think she's done the most with that Galleret win at Pimlico and then that hard fought win in the New York Stakes uh, over Belmont weekend. Me and Mary, a five-year-old daughter, Scat Daddy, we like best. Although Tony chimed in with Althika. And if you look at Althika, she's only one, run one race in America, Matt. Uh, but she was very good in D Dubai earlier this year, and her win in the Just a Game, also on Belmont Weekend, may have been the most impressive performance in this division so far. Yeah, I agree with that. So we'll have to see if uh, uh, if that uh, Philly can put together a few more big races. That's right. All right. Male sprinter, another division match, just like the turf female, where there's so much to happen still the second half of the year. This this award for the end of the year championship will be decided at the end of the year or, or, or at least through the Breeders' Cup. But for now, we're giving a midseason award out. It wasn't easy. It was a split decision. But it's Forensic Fire, the old six-year-old pro, the son of Poseidon's uh, warrior Matt, who's won two straight nice wins in New York. He was third in the Breeders' Cup sprint last year, but his wins in the Run Happy and the True North were good enough to get him the midseason award from us. Yeah, another one of those two for two horses this year that uh, are dominating our midseason awards. Hey, you got to love a horse like this uh, and, and uh, with Forensic Fire, especially because he was one of those horses that ran for uh, Jason Service. A couple years back one of the few horses who's a, been able to change trainers and continue to run really well and maybe even run better than he did for service now in the barn of uh kelly breen uh two really nice victories at belmont park but again no grade ones there's a lot more to go on in this division yeah, exactly like me and Mary. He's got a grade three and a grade two win. They looked good, and he beat a very good sprinter last time rather easily in Flagstaff. So Forenze Fire gets the award, but you're right, a lot to do still. I also like what you said about changing hands from the service barn 
to the Kelly Breen barn. He's not missed a beat since he's been in Kelly Breen's barn. 13 career stakes wins for Firenze Fire, but so far this year, we think he's done the most, although you mentioned the three-year-old drain the clock is another really good option for this award. Yeah, again, an impressive victory uh, in New York on Belmont Stakes weekend uh, at a little bit of an upset price, um, and uh, he's got a nice body of work. Yeah, he does. Although if I'm looking ahead and I'm making a prediction who wins this award ultimately, I wouldn't look past the horse he got by last time. And that's Jackie's warrior. He could turn out to be the best sprinter of all by the end of the year. All right, Matt, how about female sprinter? Uh, this was unanimous two for two again this year, but uh, she seems to be far and above the rest in this division. Yeah, without question, far and above. Um, Another one that's uh, two for two this year, uh, came back and won a grade three in California and then got a grade one in, uh, in Kentucky in the Derby City Distaff. Uh, um, you know, her victories can just be overwhelming against uh, the other female sprinters. We'll see going ahead where she runs, um, what happens because of course, um, she is trained by Bob Baffert. She's trained by Bob Baffert. We haven't said her name yet. Her name, of course, is Gamine. And I think she is one of the most talented horses in American training. But she is another one of those horses that has tested positive before from the Bob Baffert barn. So that's always a worry. But uh, looking back at some of those races, she ran up until the Breeders' Cup uh, Philly and Mare Sprint, which she won in dominating fashion. As Matt said, two nice stakes wins this year. Gamine is the female sprinter midseason award winner. Well, Matt, we get all the way down to the horse. No, let's wait on the horse of the year. Let's just talk about the, the, uh, the, the human connections real quick. How about trainer of the year split decision? I think you and I had different uh, uh, winners here. Tony helped me break the tie. We went with Brad Cox over Steve Asmussen. Uh, either way, Brian, those two are the two that, you know, have been dominating the first half of the year. Brad Cox, you know, uh, across the board in all kinds of different divisions. He's got had so many stakes wins. Uh, Steve Asmussen, you know, we, we talked about Silver State. You mentioned Jackie's Warrior as another one of his horses. He's so good with the two-year-old, so we're certainly going to expect that. And I heard uh, Steve Asmussen uh, uh, say uh, or, uh, a couple of weeks ago on a show that, folks, you should watch out for the gun runner two-year-olds coming this year. Asmussen said they are spectacular. Yeah, that's exciting news because we were both fans of gun runner when he was the horse of the year and a really good two-year-old and three-year-old before that a few years ago. But I had to go with Brad Cox. Uh, you know, Asmussen's got the volume for sure. He's he's leading uh, the list as far as money won and races won. But if you look at the the, the races, uh, the money won per starts and just the number of really, really good horses, I had to go with Brad Cox. And of course, he trains essential quality, one of the leaders right now for the horse of the year race. And uh, maybe a similar type of decision for the jockey midseason award, Matt. And, and again, it, this one was a split decision, although we agreed and Tony disagreed with us. We went a little bit more towards the volume. He's on the shelf now with a little bit of an injury, but we went with Irad Ortiz Jr. over Tony's choice of Flavian and Prop. Yeah, certainly volume. He's leading in wins. He's leading in money earned. Certainly wins a lot of big races, but we're so used to Irad winning big races for, uh, you know, trainers like uh, especially Chad Brown um, and Flavian Pratt has distinguished himself clearly as the best rider out in California. But uh, uh, so many of those races out in California are, are against horse uh, against fields of four or five or six. That's true. And, and Flavio Pratt did distinguish himself in the Triple Crown a little bit, riding two different horses and riding them to very good performances. So he, if you didn't know too much about the French import uh, uh, based out of California, Flavio Pratt before this year, uh, even though he got put up in the Kentucky Derby a few years ago, you certainly learn more about him now. But we went up with Irad Ortiz. And it was interesting to me, as Tony had these graphics for our uh, midseason award winners, that uh, I was like, well, that's an Irad Ortiz horse. Oh, that's an Irad Ortiz horse. But 
it wasn't listed because in the last race, uh, some of these winners had, they were ridden by different jockeys. So Irad Ortiz certainly is a, a dominant force out in the East Coast and a dominant uh, figure in big races. So that's who we went with. Matt, that only leaves one award left. It's the big one. It's the horse of the year. And I think we have a lot of good candidates. I'm going to, I'm going to throw out names like domestic spending. I'm going to throw out names like Latruska, essential quality, uh, uh, mystic guide who we didn't even have as a divisional champion, but in the end, who did we go with? We got silver state as the mid-season horse of the year and and like we said uh when we were talking about the older male division uh championship uh you know for a body of work four wins four starts uh the met mile um the the dirt male typically has an edge in the horse of the year voting at the end of the year but also like we said it's a long haul uh, till the end of the year and the Breeders' Cup Classic carries so much weight. Right. And we don't know for sure if Silver State is a horse that might stretch out to 10 furlongs or might be a horse more suited to the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. So that could really come into play in the ultimate horse of the year championship. But we're talking about midseason awards and we're going with volume, folks, because we're going with four stakes wins. We're going with an undefeated record. And we're going with what I would say is the best older dirt win of the year. I know Mystic Guide went over to Dubai and won, but I didn't think that was especially strong Dubai World Cup. And uh, I know early in the year, Nick Sko won the Pegasus, but I, I just can't put as much weight in that January race. Silver State won the Met Mile in New York. He won the Oakland Handicap, a nice win there at Oakland Park. He's got two other stakes, four wins this year, six in a row. A lot of good choices. As I mentioned, we easily could have gone with a three-year-old. We could have gone with, uh, you could say, Latruska has done as much as anybody this year. Domestic spending may be the most dominant horse, Mystic Guide, if you like the mile and a quarter horses. And Matt, if we're talking about who's going to be the Breeders' Cup Classic champion at the end of the year, Silver State would not be one of my top picks. but uh, and, and maybe Maxfield would be my top pick. But right now, I think he's done the most. He's our horse of the year for the midseason awards. Yeah, fair enough. And I agree, you know, I, I with uh, the chances of Silver State in the uh, uh, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's it. That's it. That's our show. Uh, short show, Matt Schiffman, a short show this week, but a fun show. I hope you enjoyed looking back at the best of the first half of 2021 here with our midseason awards. I, I, I kid around a little bit with we're the only ones doing the midseason awards, but I think it's fun because it's kind of a break between the Triple Crown and then when Saratoga and Del Mar opened. We got a little break here, Matt, and it's a good time to say who was the best of the first half of the year. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. Matt, what's your parting shot for our midseason awards show? Midseason horse racing, Brian, means that it can't be too far away from the big summer meetings Saratoga and Del Mar coming up. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Tony Bada Bing, for his votes and for putting together the show. Yeah, and I, I'm just getting a, a, a word in from Tony Bada Bing. He says the best horse racing show as far as the midseason awards goes to none other than Horse Center. Matt, how do you like that? All right, I, Tony. I think there's uh, no question about that, Brian, for both longevity and performance. <laughs> on a week-to-week -week basis. I think Tony may be a bit biased, Matt, but I'll take it at this point. I'll take whatever I can get. Folks, thanks for, to you for watching every week. We sure do appreciate you tuning in and subscribing, turning on those notifications. It really helps Matt and I out here at Horse Center. We also want to thank the best contest site out there. That is Derby Wars. Don't forget about them. Folks, next week we'll be back talking with a little bit more normal show. We'll be talking about big races coming up next week from Churchill Downs, including the Stephen Foster. Don't miss it. We'll see you right here next week on Horse Center.